Welcome back to the Mauler's Punch in the Face video blog right here on Paul Lee. On Paul Lee. On Paul. Very funny, Grim. Just put it in one spot and leave it there, okay? <sighs> ha ha. Now, would you please get this thing out of my face? <laughs> Thank you, Dick. Okay, let's get on to the, with today's topic, which is something that I've taken a, a lot of pleasure in following recently. It's the progression of female mixed martial arts. Now, the women's side of the sport has taken some big strides forward recently, uh, starting with its kickstart in Bodog fight, enjoying a big surge of popularity during Corano Mania, and now having its charge led by the ridiculously charismatic Rowdy Ronda Rousey. And all through that time, I've always thought about the ways in which female MMA has to be marketed differently from its male counterpart, which in turn reminded me of a conversation I had a few years ago with a former WWE diva. Now at the time, the lady in question had retired from pro wrestling and she was considering a career in professional boxing. But she told me that while she'd been comfortable using her sexuality as a wrestler, she didn't want to do the same thing as a boxer because she wanted to be appreciated for her skills and her abilities alone. And at the time, it made perfect sense to me. I didn't see why she should have to use her looks as a lure when her fists were the ones that were going to be doing the talking. And you know what? I was a complete and total moron for thinking that. In the years following that conversation, I came to realize that as people, we are more about the packaging than we are about the actual product, especially when that packaging involves sex. Now, sex is something that drives most of us, and it's something that appeals to us on a very primal level. And if you package damn near anything in a sexual way, you're going to get people's attention for long enough to make your pitch for what you're actually trying to get across. Let me give you an example of the power of sex. Last year I went down to Dallas to watch the semifinals of the Strike Force Heavyweight Grand Prix. And during the post-fight press conference, I walked in to see seated at the back of the room a bunch of the baddest ass fighters in the history of MMA. I mean, Josh Barnett, Alistair Overeem, Fabricio Ferdum. It was a real who's who. However, if you put a gun to my head right now and you ask me what color shirt one of them was wearing or how one of them responded to a specific question, I'd have to take the bullet. And you know why? Because standing between me and those fighters was former Strike Force women's champion Misha Tate wearing a pair of high heels and a skin tight pair of pants. Now I wanted to know what those guys at the front of the room had to say, but my attention kept getting drawn back to Misha. And that's because I'm wired that way and there are millions of other people who are wired in a similar fashion. The bottom line is that sex really does sell, and anybody who fails to acknowledge that is leaving a lot of money on the table. I mean, let's be serious. Does anybody really think that hundreds of thousands of people flock to HeymanHustle.com just because Paul Heyman is one of the most brilliant booking minds in the history of pro wrestling and MMA? Hell no. They go there because there's boobs and booties all over everywhere. But while they're there, a lot of them are going to notice that Paul's a freaking genius and they're going to come back again and again for more of his insights and for more boobs and booties. Now, that's not to say that if you don't look like a pinup model, you can't be a successful female fighter. Quite the contrary, there's a lot of ways for a female fighter to make herself into a commodity. However, if you do have a good look in that department and you're not capitalizing on it, you are just as stupid as anybody who says that women shouldn't be doing that sort of thing anyway. So that's why when I see Gina Carano striking glamour girl poses or Michelle Watterson doing a damn fine job of filling out a bikini top or Misha Tate with her oh my god back end hanging out of a pair of booty shorts, I don't see a girl who's being demeaned and I don't see a girl who's using sex to hide some kind of inadequacy in her chosen profession. What I do see is somebody who's smart enough to know what she's got and use it to make you pay attention long enough to realize that she's not just a hottie, she's also a badass fighter. And that makes her many, many times more marketable. And that is the Muller's Punch in the Face video blog. As always, thank you to Fusion Bodybuilding, Roots of Fight, and you for watching. Until next time, this is Paul the Muller Lazenby wishing you happiness, health, and a punch in the face.